cash. Okay, your total comes to 525. I am begging everyone, please do not be like this guy with people just trying to do their jobs. Right there. I come over there. The endless crap these folks deal with makes me feel like they have no empathy or compassion. Yeah. Oh, and then we just come and talk face to face? I feel for the cashier. And those, this waste of space is holding up with his charades. Oh, this seems a little absurd, doesn't it? The problem is, this guy doesn't think the plexiglass is absurd. He thinks all of it is absurd. He doesn't believe in masks. He's not wearing one. He may not even believe the pandemic is real. His actions speak volumes. And giving a woman trying to make a living as a cashier a hard time is some seriously evil stuff. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, cashiers working in the U.S. earned an average of just over $20,000 per year as of May 2011. The lowest paid 10% of cashiers earned $780 or less per hour, which works out to an average annual salary of just over $16,000. The Bureau reports that many cashiers start out earning minimum wage. While the exact monetary value of min wage varies by state, it must be at least $7.25 per hour according to federal law. Depending on which state you are in, it varies. Those in Washington... <laughs> I can't believe the article even says this, led the pack for 2011 with an average salary of just over $25,000 a year, followed by Alaska at $24,400, California, $23,450. Cashiers just starting out can also expect to earn the highest wages in Washington, which has the highest minimum wage of any state at $9.04. Let me be very clear as you guys continue reading this. That is crap. We need a higher minimum wage. The fact that this article is touting Washington as having $9 an hour is absurd. The Houston Chronicle put it quite simply. Grocery stores across the U.S. are installing protective plastic shields at checkouts to help cashiers and shoppers from infecting one another with the coronavirus. The Desert News' Daryl Austin wrote, Surgical face masks have been used in hospitals for decades and by the public at large long before COVID. It's only in the age of social media misinformation and political polarization that masks have become so controversial, but setting politics aside, data on masks remains compelling with the preponderance of evidence supporting their efficacy in reducing transmission of airborne viruses like COVID. A recent meta-analysis of multiple global studies found that masks are linked to a commanding 53% decrease in COVID-19 transmission when worn properly. An Arizona epidemiologist recently told the author how N95 masks or surgical masks have proven to be especially effective. Several studies have found that surgical masks are between 66 and 70 percent effective. Cloth masks are certainly better than no mask, but upgrading makes sense when better options are readily available. Surgical masks, for instance, are made up of more layers of protection than cloth masks. Researchers at Stanford and Yale contributed to a study last year that found that surgical masks are 95% effective at filtering out COVID virus particles compared to just 37% for cloth masks. 